What's, every, what's up everybody? It's Jackson from ActionJacksonFitness.com. I'm coming at you today with a video about post-workout nutrition. So let's talk about it. I just finished up my workout. I did legs and shoulders today. Now it's time to get my post-workout shaken. So anytime we're taking a supplement or really honestly anytime we're, we're really doing anything, we want to think about the objectives or the goals for what we're doing. I'm very like task-oriented and goal-oriented, results-focused. So with a post-workout shake, think about what are our goals. Our goals are to, one, stimulate protein synthesis, right? We want to build muscle, and you need to stimulate protein synthesis in order to do that. That's why we just went to the gym. We broke down our muscles in order to build them up, bigger, stronger, etc. The next thing we want to do is we want to stop muscle breakdown. When we're in the gym working out, we're actually breaking down our muscles. Like, you might not know that. But you don't actually get bigger and stronger in the gym. You get bigger and stronger outside the gym when you're recovering. So we're breaking our muscles down in the gym, and that continues to happen after your workout. So if you don't take in any nutrition after your workout, it, muscles will, your muscles will start to break down, especially if you don't take in branched-chain amino acids before. Uh, but that's another topic for another, another video. But uh, your muscles will break down, and, and it continues to break down. So we want to stop any sort of muscle breakdown to prevent any loss of muscle. Next thing we want to do is we want to replenish our muscle glycogen. So especially if you just did an intense workout, you burn off a lot of glycogen, especially because today I did legs. So when you're doing a leg workout, you're going to burn up a ton of muscle glycogen. That's all your carbohydrate stores that are stored in your muscles. You want to think about that like a gas tank. You only have so much of it. And when you use it all up, then your body has to either tap into fat or tap into muscle in order to... Um, you know, have energy. So we want to replenish some of those. So the next time we go into the gym, we're going to be, you know, we'll be able to lift weights. We'll be, we'll be strong. We'll have enough fuel in order to lift. So replenish muscle glycogen is the next goal. And then the last goal is to speed recovery, repair and recovery. So with those goals in mind, we're going to be taking in whey protein in order to stimulate protein synthesis. Now this is the kind I like. It's a high protein, low carbohydrate, uh, protein powder and it also has no artificial sweeteners in it. So we got 23 grams of protein, one gram of fat, and three grams of carbohydrates in here. Um, and you also again want a low fat, um, a low fat protein powder ideally because that's going to make it lower in calories. But that's also because we don't really want a lot of fats in our post workout shake. We want to focus on protein and carbs in our post workout shake. So we got our whey protein. I got that in my shaker bottle right here. Next thing is going to be uh, stop muscle breakdown. So stopping muscle breakdown is going to be, and also actually replenishing muscle glycogen is going to be the carbohydrates for that. So we're going to use our dextrose powder, which is going to be just a basically pure non-GMO um, sugar. I mean, no, no beating around the bush about it. This is pure sugar. Now, I, I know a lot of people think, oh, sugar, this is bad. That's not good, man. I shouldn't have that. But strategically speaking, if you use it in the right times and in the right dose, sugar can be really good for you. So at the right time, in the right dose, sugar is good for you and it's going to help. So it's going to help stop any muscle breakdown because it's going to raise your insulin. And anytime insulin is released, that's going to stop muscle breakdown. Um, if you think about branch chain amino acids, how they work uh, in order to stop muscle breakdown, they, per like, they act as like a force field if you heard of BCAAs. What they do is they release a little bit of insulin. And, and obviously, the same thing when you take in a lot of sugar, that's going to spike your insulin up. That's going to stop muscle breakdown. But they're also going to replenish muscle glycogen. Because sugar can be stored in the muscles, all that carbohydrate is going to go to the muscles to replenish any glycogen. Now, a lot of people like to take fruit in their post-workout shake. And one of the reasons why I don't typically like fruit is because it cannot be stored in the muscle cells. So fruit cannot replenish muscle glycogen because it must be stored and processed in the liver and your capacity for carbohydrates in the liver is much smaller than your capacity in your muscle cells. I know that's getting a little scientific um, and for some of you that might be a little bit more information than you want or a little over your head but just just to keep in mind. So fruit can only be stored processed in, um, in the liver whereas any type of sugar even if it's from a candy bar can be actually processed in um, well, it can be stored in your muscle cells and used later as carbohydrate fuel. So that's why sugar is good in our post-workout shake. Now, I put two scoops of whey protein powder in 
Um, and that's going to be what 46 grams of protein. And now I'm putting three tablespoons, three tablespoons, measured tablespoons of dextrose powder. That's going to be 30 grams of carbohydrates. So not a ton. I'm not putting in tons and tons of carbohydrates in here. If you think about it, like a Snickers bar has, uh, I think 27 carbohydrates in it, 27 grams of sugar. So there's not tons and tons of sugar that I'm putting in the shake. I'm just putting in enough to get a nice little insulin spike and in order to help replenish, start to replenish muscle glycogen. I'm going to be taking in a lot more carbohydrates later in the day in order to, again, fully replenish and give my body everything it needs to recover from this workout. But I'm starting that process with 30 grams of, of sugar. And the other thing is, is that sugar is not nutritious. There's not a lot of nutritional value to it. So that's why I don't want to take in too much of it because there's just no nutritional value. If I'm taking in rice or I'm taking in potatoes or I'm taking in, I mean, hell, pancakes, like and you name your carbohydrate, it's going to have a higher nutritional value than the sugar will. So I'd rather get a majority of my carbs from those higher nutritional value um, foods instead of just the sugar. Now, um, we'll talk a little bit more about how, to, how much sugar you should be taking and how to vary that uh, later on. Uh, well, when we talk about goals, uh, but I take in 30. And then the next thing to help repair and um, replenish, or I'm sorry, just to help repair those muscle cells, we're going to take in our creatine monohydrate. Uh, this is bulk supplements, pure creatine monohydrate. There's nothing special about it. There's nothing fancy about it. If you're taking those crazy transport system creatines and fancy this and brand new, don't, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your money. Just take in Pure, simple, creatine monohydrate, nothing fancy, nothing special about it. And you're going to put in one teaspoon, one teaspoon of, that's going to be about five grams. So if you look on the back here, uh, one teaspoon, 5,000 milligrams, five grams of creatine. And that's going to be ideal. Now, as far as loading periods go and all kinds of other stuff, if you heard of that, you don't need to worry about that. Uh, loading, yes, it is true that if you did a loading phase with your creatine, it will saturate the muscle cells a little bit faster and it will technically begin to work a little faster because it does take a number of days, even you know a number of weeks but in, in order to fully saturate your cells with creatine. But you're talking about a very minimal gain where you're taking in two, three times the dose sometimes for a very minimal gain. It's just not worth it. It's not worth it. Just do five grams a day. That's going to be easy. And after a couple of weeks, your muscles will be fully saturated. I don't remember the actual number of days, how long it takes, but just taking five grams a day. Just keep it simple. Keep it straightforward. Nothing fancy. It doesn't need to get crazy. And you're going to put it in your shaker bottle and you're going to shake it up. And then you're going to drink it. That simple. It is sweet because of the sugar, but it tastes kind of good. So, all right, let's talk about now how to change up the post-workout shake, things you should be putting in it, other things you can be putting in it, things you shouldn't be putting in it, um, how to modify it for your specific goals, timing, all kinds of other stuff. So I worked out about 45, probably closer to 60 minutes now ago is when I finished my workout. Now, research suggests that if you read and you really dig into this and you want, want to get very strategic about your post-workout shake, research suggests that waiting about an hour, 60 minutes after your workout is ideal in order to get maximum protein synthesis and to get the most benefits possible from your post-workout shake. 60 minutes. Now, I know that might seem a little strange because most people remember when it used to be like a 30 minute anabolic window and you had to get your protein shake in. And if you didn't, you were totally fucked. That's not true. That was a lot of uh, myth and kind of garbage that was created by supplement companies and magazines and other stuff to sell more protein shakes. Not true at all. You don't need to get in your protein shake within 30 minutes. That's just, I mean, it's just simply not true. So, sorry, I'm hungry. Um, but, don't need to worry about that. Ideally, again, 60 minutes, but that's like in an ideal world, world and that's perfect. Today's Sunday, so I can kind of time my protein shake a little bit better because I'm not doing intermittent fasting today. However, if I was doing intermittent fasting, I would just take it right afterwards. So as far as timing is concerned, if you're somebody who's an ectomorph and you're really trying to build muscle mass and it's really hard for you to consume enough calories, 
and um, eating enough food throughout the day is a very difficult and challenging thing, then I would not wait an hour because that's an hour of not eating. So if you're an ectomorph and you're trying to build a lot of muscle, what I would do if I were you is I would make my post-workout shake before I went to the gym. I would bring it with me and I would actually start drinking it towards the tail end of my workout. And I'm going to do that for a couple of reasons. One, because you want to get in your, your shake as soon as possible because you want to limit any muscle breakdown uh, during the gym. And that's also going to help you because it's going to allow you more time to eat. And if eating enough calories is a very difficult and challenging thing for you throughout the day, you want to use as much time as you can in order to eat as much food as you can. So again, if you're an ectomorph trying to build muscle and it's really hard for you to eat enough calories, I would strategically drink that protein shake either either before you finish the workout, so towards the tail end of your workout, or immediately afterwards. And again, that's just to maximize time because you just cannot get enough calories throughout the day and you need to maximize every, every hour you can in order to consume calories. And you also wanna make sure you're not breaking down your muscles too much. Um, the other thing I would, um, I would think about if I was an ectomorph is I would probably double up the dosage. So I'm doing 30 grams of carbohydrates and 46 grams of protein in here. Um, you could even go closer to a one-to-one -one ratio if you're just somebody who's trying to maintain or maybe slightly build. If you're somebody who's trying to really put on some, some size, and again, you're an ectomorph, I would probably put in twice as many carbohydrates as I did protein. So if I put in 46 grams of protein, I would probably put in you know closer to like 80 grams of, um, of carbohydrates. So I would go like somewhere between 1.5 and 2 grams of carbohydrates for every gram of protein I put in. So probably doubling up that dosage. And again, anywhere between like 60 and maybe 80 grams of carbohydrates is what I would do and what I would recommend for my clients who are more, uh, again, ectomorphs really trying to put on size and it's a struggle for them to eat enough calories. Uh, again, you want to take in a lot of your carbohydrates from whole food sources, good quality nutritious food that's going to be better for building muscle. But sometimes when you, when you really struggle to eat enough calories, you're going to need to leverage something like this in order to get those carbohydrates and those calories in. Now, if you're somebody who's trying to lose body fat, if you want to lose body fat, then instead of drinking that shake during your workout and instead of doubling up the carbohydrates, what I would do is I would take 30 grams or somewhere between maybe 20 and 30 grams of carbohydrates. And I would also, again, wait. And I would wait probably about an hour after my workout um, in order to take in those carbohydrates. So you want to be taking in, again, you still want to be taking in some sugar because you want to stop muscle breakdown. And if you're on a cut, that's really important, right? If you're cut and you're taking in a caloric deficit, you're not eating enough calories throughout the day because you're trying to lose body fat, then you really need to do everything you can to prevent muscle loss. So still you want to take in your sugar uh, or at least some type of carbohydrate, uh, preferably a, a fast carbohydrate after your workout. And you want to do that again about an hour afterwards. I would wait an hour. Waiting an hour is really going to help maximize all kinds of uh, fat burn. It's going to maximize your hormone levels in your body. And um, it's going to do a lot better, a lot more for you in terms of losing body fat. So wait about an hour if you're somebody who's trying to cut and reduce the carbohydrates. Um, as far as as far as far any other um, things you can add to your protein shake or your post-workout shake, your protein, your carbs, and your creatine is going to be your main three ingredients. That's going to be your foundational elements. You can add a, um, a lot of people like to add, you know, L-carnitine, uh, because they think it helps burn fat and stuff. It's not really the case. L-carnitine does not help build fat, although L-carnitine can be helpful in order to uh, help uh, speed recovery and reduce muscle soreness. There's been some research around that. Uh, minimal gains there. Uh, it's not going to be a game changer for you like creatine is. So you can add it. You can certainly add it, but it's not going to be a game changer for you uh, by any stretch of the imagination. So I just go with the, with the big three. Protein, carbs, creatine. Um, you'll notice, so this is high protein, high carbohydrate, and low in fat. If you've seen any of my videos before, heard me talk, or read my, read my blogs, uh, I, I'm, I'm big on, um, I'm big on uh, setting up your macros for success. And for me, what that means when I'm working with clients is high protein, high carbohydrate, low fat, 
or if I'm going opposite, I'm going high protein, low carbohydrate, high fat, but not all three. So that's why there's no fats in this post-workout shake because I want high protein, I want my higher carbohydrates, and then I want low fat. If you go all three macros, then you're just setting yourself up um, for failure, in my opinion, and from what I've seen and from what I've experienced in my own body. So my clients, people, what I recommend, and if you're watching this video, what I'd recommend is, again, do high protein, high carbohydrate, and then low fat in your post-workout shake. And then even when you're looking at the meals that you take throughout the rest of the day, you wanna structure them. So again, if you're, if you're doing high carbs, you're going high protein, but then you're going low fat. And if you're gonna do low carbohydrates, then you're gonna go high fat, if that makes sense. All right, um, I just got some visitors, so I'm gonna end this video now, but I hope this was helpful. Again, post-workout nutrition, for muscle size. I'm Jackson from actionjacksonfitness.com. Thanks for watching.